Hey, welcome to another episode of Buff Speak Weekly. I'm your host, Nick Ferguson. As always, he is the disruptor, Jordan Dominic. Okay, 48-41, the Trojan comes to town. You guys don't get the dub, but what was the mentality of the team in the first half when everything was going the Trojans' way? So the mentality on the sideline was honestly different than what we usually expect from a team that's down, you know, 21, 27, 35 points. Um, we were all, we just all had our head held high. We weren't arguing. We weren't bickering back and forth as a team. Nobody was blaming somebody else for this. Somebody was blaming nobody for that. We were all just taking it in stride. We were like, look, this wasn't our half. We, this isn't what we need. But we still have faith. We still believe. We know what we can do. And we know what we're capable of. So once we got into that locker room, Coach Prime stepped into the middle of the stage and he just he basically reiterated that to us. Like, hey, this ain't on me. This on y'all. Y'all have to motivate me this game. What is it that you all believe in? What is it you all are willing out there, go out there and do? What are you willing to achieve? And with that speech, we definitely had like a different mentality. Like we knew we didn't start fast the first half. We knew we didn't come out and be physical. We knew we weren't working in the trenches as we wanted to. But that second half mentality, it truly changed. And Coach Prime had a great speech for us. And it wasn't even a motivational speech. It was more so, what can you do to motivate yourself, you know? And I feel like everybody took that in with themselves and just locked arms, linked in, embraced, and decided, you know what? We can do so much better. We are so much better. And we came out with a different passion, a different fire in that second half. Uh, as you can see, but that first half mentality, we just need to have that entire mentality throughout the game. We don't need to go out there and, you know, go down 20, 30 points in the first half. That's not how we need to keep playing. We need to start fast and start physical. And, you know, that's been an emphasis for us this week. And, you know, there's always a different emphasis every week, but this week has definitely been an emphasis of starting fast. Uh, it's been an emphasis for the past couple of weeks, but now we're truly like, look, if we don't start fast right, we're going to start it over. We're going to make sure that we're getting right. We're going to make sure that we're starting the way we want to start. We're physical in the trenches. We're making sure that we're setting edges on defense. We're making sure that we play and fly fast to the ball. We're making sure we're making our blocks get into the line and moving. You know, we're getting back to our brand of football, and we're truly still discovering what we are capable of. Now, you kind of speaking of getting back into a groove, we saw Kamani McClain – who got into the game. He was in there a couple of plays in the Oregon game, but more so in his uh, game against the Trojans. And, you know, early last week, Coach Prime, when asked about Amari, and he, he's just talked about, you know, hey, he needs to come to practice, come to m meetings. But I did see Travis Hunter, who did not play in the game. He, he was over there coaching a lot of players up. So what does it mean to know that Travis is not playing in the game? But he's still over there trying to coach guys up and get them ready, prepared to play in the game. Uh, it's good to know. You know, Travis is a natural born leader. He sees the football in a way that we completely don't. Uh, he's a generational talent. I've said it before, and I'll keep saying it. I'll keep reiterating it. Uh, he's definitely an amazing individual. And just to be able to go out there and not just sit there at the team and you know be upset oh I'm hurt I wish I could go back with the team but instead he's taking it in stride and he's you know what I'm gonna pass on the wisdom that I've gained from the coaches that I played under and what I've learned through the game and pass it on to the younger players and anybody that's willing to listen and learn from me as well so he's over there on the sideline coaching corners up on technique coaching corners up on what kind of routes they're running what's based on like based on film study and everything so just being able to see him help out the corners over there and then the corners natural talent emerge. You know, he was coaching up Cormani and Cormani came out and I believe he had a PBU in the end zone against yeah. uh Brendan Rice. Yeah. yeah Rice. <laughs> I remember that. I was in on that play. I was watching, I was like, Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> I wanna let y'all know that boy is from Lakeland. Same place as me. Yeah. So we're gonna, gonna make sure it's known. Let Lakeland has some dogs. Coach went and got Cormani and Cormani's really taking strides so far. He's really definitely changed, not just changed, but just matured in such a short time of being here from just getting in from high school, just going through camp to maturing. And I just, I love to see it. I love the way he's been handling himself. He's risen up to the call whenever coach called him out and he's not one to shy away. So all the respect, I'm so proud of my boy and he showed what he can do. He's was ranked the number one cornerback last year coming out of high school for a reason. You know, I can say that with complete confidence. That boy is talented. That boy is, 
great on the field. And I just can't wait to see where it takes them. And just learning from Coach Mathis, Travis, and Coach Prime himself, you know, he's in the right hands. He's in good hands. So once again, it seems to be a common theme every time I talk to you, no matter what the outcome is. Someone new always steps up. This week's player, Amarian Miller, true freshman, right? Usually when you come into college, it's just kind of like, hey, sit in the back of room and gain all the information you need. But this was a guy that got an opportunity because of injuries, but he exploded on the scene. Seven receptions, 196 yards, and he averaged 28 yards. 28 a reception. So to watch a true freshman just go out there and seize the moment on one of the biggest stages in college football, what was that like for you as a teammate? As a teammate, for me, it wasn't surprising. It really wasn't. But I tell you, you can go back and look at all the interviews. I've told you before, we have so much talent, especially in that freshman room. I told y'all when Dylan broke out, Mm -hmm. we have some freshmen, we have some talent. Shiloh, Shiloh, he's a dog. He's not a freshman, don't get me wrong, but Shiloh's a dog. Anybody that's a dog on our team, I've told y'all that I'm. there's so much talent within the Colorado Buffaloes. It's crazy. And Amarion going out there and showing what he can do, we spoke it into existence. He's practiced that way. You could tell just from summer workouts he was going to be a dog. The way he was running, the way he was moving, the way he, he's so athletic, you know, and just going out there and really showing his versatility, his progress, and what he's learned and what he can do. I'm not surprised. That's not something that I'm surprised about. Anybody on our team can snap, and I could say I'm not surprised. Honestly, that's basically the expectation of everybody now. Hey, when it's your time to step up, step up, make your plays, and ball out. That's the plan. That's the goal. And Amarion did that with Rune as well as the other freshmen that are coming in. Because Kormani, locked down corner as another freshman. Dylan Edwards, another freshman. I can promise you we got other freshmen out there as well that can really – come out and play like I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen but man it's just amazing to see I got all the respect for him as well and I just want y'all to mark my words now in case anybody forgets next week this week against Arizona State another freshman is going to break out I don't know who it is yet but he's going to break out and when you ask me this question again next week yeah. I'm saying, I-, I called it I called it you know well, I'll tell you what, I look forward to it, and it's great for the CU Bucks fans, but more so for your team to watch these extraordinary freshmen just kind of make their names known to a lot of people who really don't know them. But let's just kind of speak for expectations. Now, you, you talked about it a little, like the, the expectations that you guys have, but let's dive into that and figure out where that came from. How is that being really, or that fire is being stoked every week to build up the expectations in that locker room? Honestly, the expectation is to dominate every week. The expectations never change. It's just you have to be better than the version you were last week. You have to be better than yourself, the version you were the day before. What are you doing to consistently keep getting better? Are you doing extra film study? Are you going out there and practicing? Are you staying after practice and working on drops if you got a drop? Are you working on sets if you got a set? Are you working on hand movement? Are you working on hand placement? Do you know how to get out of your stance? Do you know how to get into your stance? It's all the little things that people don't understand that you really have to lock into because so many people take the little things and the fundamentals for granted. Once you get the fundamentals down, the game comes easy. Once you understand your opponent and understand how to study film, the game comes easy. So for us, it's really just the expectation of, you want to be a pro, treat the game like a pro. Be a mm-hmm. professional in everything you do. And whether it be on the field, off the field, no matter where you at, if you're going to be a pro, be a pro. And so that's basically our expectations and our reality that we've set for ourselves. And it's been set since day one. So that's honestly all I can say about that. Those are our expectations and everybody's striving every day to reach better than they were the day before to be better. Now, usually I don't go and ask this person a question, but uh, I would be remiss if I don't, because I do realize none of us achieve what we achieve in life without having a good group of people around us. So with that being said, your family, how has your family allowed you or helped you as far as your football success, but also academic success as well? 
So my family, if you have not met them, I understand that you met them this weekend, this past weekend for USC. Uh, they had a lot to say about you. Lovely, lovely <laughs> individual. But, um, you know, the family is just in my rock, my go-to for everything. No matter what it is, I always go and speak to my dad about it, speak to my mom about it. And they've always kept me level-headed ever since I was a kid. My mom's always been told me, listen, you're going to get these academics. I don't care about sports. I don't care about anything. You're going to get these academics, you know. So when I finally got my, my first offer from well, back in high school from for football, it was crazy. And as the author, the offers kept flowing in, it was insane because my mom would still be like, I, I don't care. You need at least a 3.8 GPA to get in on an academic scholarship. I'll be like, Mama, I'm, I'm, I don't need an academic scholarship. It doesn't matter. You're going to get that scholarship. So, you know, it's always been a great, humbling experience. My parents always keep me focused, always keep my head on my shoulders, make sure I don't get too big-headed, even when I do get into the national spotlight over here in Colorado, where we've been seen on big TV games, huge games and everything. Uh, it's not it's not going to be too much for me. You know, they always make sure I'm leveled, I'm grounded. Um, even back in high school, when I was committed to Georgia Tech, my mama made me go retake the ACT and the SAT because she wanted me to get a 29 on the ACT so I can get the right future. It's crazy. Go ahead, mom. Go ahead. No, look, it's crazy. I didn't even tell you this story. So as a kid, I took my first SAT and ACT in 10th grade. Okay. The SAT, this was before the uh, before the number change made me. So the SAT, I got uh, 1,800, I believe before like the change and whatnot. And on the ACT, I got a 26. So my mom was like, okay, when do you want to retake it? I was like, huh? Because yeah. I'm over here, <laughs> here talking about I got a 22 or 23. I'm like, oh, I, I must have done good. I got a 26. She was like, uh-huh, no, we're going to retake it. So that following year, 11th grade, I had offers to UCF, USF, I was committed to USF at the time for that year. And I, my mama made me go retake the ACT and SAT again. This time I didn't, I don't remember what grade I got in the SAT, but the ACT, I got a 28. And I was like, okay, so I must be good now. She was like, okay, you're going to take the ACT one more time because I need a 29 for you to get this bright future scholarship. I'm like, mama, I already got football scholarships. I'm good. She's like, no, we want an academic scholarship as well. So ended up retaking the ACT again my senior year. Finally got the 29. I was able to get the Bright Future Scholarship, but that only applied in Florida. But she just wanted that to be there just in case to let you know, hey, you can still get this scholarship, you know, if you decide not to go for football. So that was honestly our whole, like, that was my academic powers. That's where the academic success for me comes from. Is my mom was making me retake tests until I can get my scholarship without having to go for football. And it's, she's always been like that. She's always kept me academically inclined. You know, she's always made sure me, my brother, and my sister's focus was on academics. Football and everything else came afterwards. You know, if we are not smart enough to survive in the real world and not have the common sense and the decency and, you know, just being able to take care of ourselves and knowing simple things around the house that we need to do, uh, we wouldn't be able to make it in the world if we weren't academically intelligent. So she made sure to do that for us, and we repaid her and going to get our degrees. You know, my brother got his degree from Mississippi State. I got mine from Georgia Tech, and my sister's about to get hers from Florida in three years. Wow, that, that's an extraordinary story of resilience, but more so how academics was actually stressed, because we know this. Usually we hear the student athlete, but we know once you hit campus, it's athlete student. But for your mom to know how important it is for you to make sure you have that education in your back pocket, man. That 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 is awesome, man. And you should tell your mom that she is an amazing person. Don't want to forget Pops. Pops is an extraordinary person as well. So let's go ahead and fast forward to this week's opponent. When you look at Arizona State, they're one and four on the season. They're one and three at home. And they lost a heartbreaker against Kyle last week a game that they were down but kind of rallied to come back. When you look at that team and knowing as though, hey, listen, neither team has a win 
I believe, in the Pac-12. You guys are trying to get your first Pac-12 win. What are you guys doing collectively as a team to ensure that you're going to go down to Arizona State and get that all-important first Pac-12 win, Pac win of the season? So the emphasis this week was just expectations. That was what we mentioned in meeting, and that's what we have. What are the expectations you have of yourself? Not what any other expectations anybody else has, not what the coach has of you. What expectations do you have of yourself? What do you expect to do when you go out onto that field every day? Do you expect to dominate or do you expect to just breeze through practice? Unless you expect to dominate, you shouldn't be out there. You know, that's what our emphasis is. You have to expect to do what is necessary. If you have a job, do your job. Do it to the best of your ability. If you have the ability to make a play, go make a play. If you have the ability to go get a pick, go get a pick. And everybody has that ability. So now it's really just making sure that you meet your expectations that you set every single day. What expectations of yourself do you have that you know you can meet? What expectation do you have on your first step? What expectation do you have with your eyes? Where are you looking at? Do you see where the ball is going? Do you see what you need to see? Are you running your routes correctly? Are you blocking the scheme that your offensive line call, coach called? Are you doing what you need to do on to, and off the field? So basically for us, it's really nothing new. It's really expectations. Uh, we know exactly what we need to do. We're going to go out there, play, do our assignments, do it well. That's the only way you can win a football game, you know. There's no emphasis on, hey, this is a Pac-12 win. There's no emphasis on, oh, this. We emphasize we're going to win. It doesn't matter who we're going against. It doesn't matter what we're going against. We could go out there and fight a pack of wolves in football <laughs> uniform. You know, we're going we to go out there and win. That's what we're going to do. Uh, that's the plan, and that's what we've been focusing on each and every week. It's not – it doesn't matter the name of the jersey of whoever we're playing. You know, at the end of the day, it all matters about us. What are we doing to ensure we win the game? Now, speaking of expectations, you know, Arizona State has expectations of their own. And that starts with their running back slash quarterback slash everything do all guy, Cameron Scapo. I mean, I've seen him, you know, line up under center for direct snaps on short yardage and goal line. I've even watched him throw the ball down the field as a quarterback. How was it to prepare for a guy that has this level of versatility that he can hurt you with his legs as a runner, but he can also hurt you with his arm as a quarterback as well? How do you defend that? So the best way to defend it is to contain it. We have to make sure that we're filling gaps within the middle. We have to make sure we're setting good edges on the defense. We have to make sure we're sound within our defense. We have to make sure we're sound within the back end, know what we're doing, make sure we play the way we need to play. And we have to play the run well. We have to play on their side of the ball. We have to dominate in the trenches. I think you're starting to see a rep repetitive theme from me right now, I think. <laughs> so we have to dominate in the trenches. We have to play on their side of the line of the ball. We have to make sure that we know our job. We have to make sure that we play within the integrity of the defense. We have to win 11 of 11 one-on-one -on -one battles. That is the goal. That is the mission. That's the way you contain and stop a player. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter how good they are. And granted, this kid is definitely going to be in the NFL by next year, whatever year he decides to go. You know, he's that kind of NFL talent. He's NFL prosperity. Like, he has quickness. He has quick twitch agility. So versatile. He's super athletic. He's, I feel like he's going to be able to make it somewhere. And that's the only way you can be able to stop somebody of that caliber is to contain them, to be able to play your defense within the integrity and know that the defense is going to work when you play your position and you do it well, when you do your job. And shoot, that's how it is this week. We got to be able – that's the way we were able to start to make a stop on Caleb Williams last week. And that's how we were able to come out in the second half. But we all believed in the defense and made it an emphasis of importance to do your job. And as we started doing our job, we started creating turnover. We started creating pressure. We started creating different ways of causing disruption to Caleb Williams last week. Well, control chaos is what is going to be on the menu as the CU Buffs travel down to Arizona State to face the Sun Devils. And with chaos... It comes confusion, and confusion leads to a win for the CU Buffs. As usual, this has been Buffs Beat Weekly. I'm your host, Nick Ferguson. He is a disruptor, or shall we change it to Dominic the Dominator? Uh, and uh, we'll see 
how things are shape out this weekend. And as usual, go Buffs. Go Buffs. <laughs>